Jesus, please help us to fix our gaze upon you and stay deeply rooted in your vine. Amen. Lord, I don't feel like I should be here, but I am out of obedience, Mother Claire began. I know you love me. It's just self-hatred and maybe a little self-pity. I know how badly you feel, Claire, and I accept your apology. So now we should move forward, don't you think? I am so sorry for my pride in wanting to know. I understand that is a function of lack of faith, and I know I have scandalized souls talking so much about it all. That is not what we are called to. Nor is gluttony, which you have an embedded case of. Would you like to be delivered of that? Yes, Lord. Good. I will get to work on it right away. Please always choose the less savory foods over the more savory. That will help a great deal. He smiled as I tried to get comfortable on the cold metal chair and said, and the less comfortable alternative. I get it. It's about putting the flesh to death. Would you rather see that in the illumination or see it now? For sure now. Maybe I can do something about it. I want to pick this sinking heart up. Me too, but how? I just dug into his chest and had a good cry. I need brother to be there for me, to be kind. And I need you to be here for me and be kind. A sinking heart is not good company. How can I cheer you up? Sweet Jesus, I don't deserve that. But I do. Let's say we cheer up a bit. Jesus, all I can see are my failures right now, and I am sick at heart about them. I understand. I know it hurts to see the ways you have failed. That is why we sent you some encouragement beforehand about how you have succeeded. Let's look at those two. There is a helpful balance. I don't want to take any more time about me. Tell everyone to read from Jeremiah 51, verse 8 through 15, Revelation chapter 18, and Zechariah chapter 14, where Christ fights against those who possess the earth. After his victory, the angel said, there will be one flock and one shepherd. Here is an excerpt from Dimitri Dudeman's book, Dreams and Visions from God. I prayed, then went to bed. I was still awake when suddenly I heard a trumpet sound. A voice cried out to me, Stand! In my vision, I was in America. I walked out of my home and began to look for the one who had spoken to me. As I looked, I saw three men dressed alike. Two of the men carried weapons. One of the armed men came to me. I woke you to show you what is to come. He said, Come with me. I didn't know where I was being taken. But when we reached a certain place, he said, Stop here. A pair of binoculars was handed to me, and I was told to look through them. Stand there. Don't move and look, he continued. You will see what they are saying and what they are preparing for America. As I was looking, I saw a great light. A dark cloud appeared over it. I saw the president of Russia, a short chubby man who said he was the president of China, and two others. The last two also said where they were from, but I did not understand. However, I gathered they were part of Russian-controlled territory. The men stepped out of the cloud. The Russian president began to speak to the Chinese one. I will give you the land with all the people, but you must free Taiwan of the Americans. 
Do not fear. We will attack them from behind. A voice said to me, Watch where the Russians penetrate America. I saw these words being written. Alaska. Minnesota. Florida. Then the man spoke again. When America goes to war with China, the Russians will strike without warning. The other two presidents spoke. We, too, will fight for you. Each had a place already planned as a point of attack. All of them shook hands and hugged. Then they all signed a contract. One of them said, We're sure that Korea and Cuba will be on our side, too. Without a doubt, together, we can destroy America. The president of Russia began to speak insistently. Why let ourselves be led by the Americans? Why not rule the world ourselves? They have to be kicked out of Europe, too. Then I could do as I please with Europe. The man standing beside me asked, This is what you saw. They act as friends and say they respect the treaties made together. But everything I've shown you is how it will really happen. You must tell them what is being planned against America. Then, when it comes to pass, the people will remember the words the Lord has spoken. Who are you? I asked. I am the protector of America. America's sin has reached God. He will allow this destruction, for he can no longer stand such wickedness. God, however, still has people that worship him with a clean heart as they do his work. He has prepared a heavenly army to save these people. As I looked, a great army, well armed and dressed in white, appeared before me. Do you see that? the man asked. This army will go to battle to save my chosen ones. Then, the difference between the godly and the ungodly will be evident. And that is the end of this excerpt. Pray for America, dear family, to turn away from sin and unrighteousness and to turn back to God. Amen.